Welcome to my channel, Dr. Munshi Nasser, Skilled on How Are You, My Dear Learners. In this video, we are going to talk about how to formulate systematic review research question. We find difficulties when we formulate a systematic review research question. It is always a challenging task for the researcher to come up with a proper research question for our systematic review or meta analysis research article. So we are going to discuss and share a technique how we can do a proper research question formulation for our systematic review and meta-analysis paper in this particular video. So without wasting any time, let's get started. My dear learners, as you can see here that the formulating the research question, there are two important protocol and one of the protocol called PCOS and the other protocol called SPIDER. You can see the systematic review question is formulated a priori and tested during the scoping phase. A standard formula for structuring a review question is PCOS for quantitative question and SPIDER for qualitative ones. In this particular guideline, which I will share in the video description, you can easily download. You can see when we have PCOS for quantitative questions, we have P stands for population, I stands for intervention, C stands for comparison and likewise O for outcomes and S for study design. And these are the questions, for example, patient, who are your patient population for your research? When you are collecting information, it is very important that the paper that you are collecting, who are your sample, who are your population, whether it is a countries or whether it is a population of any patient or probably any enzyme if you are is a life science faculty. So it is diff it is very important to decide which population you are targeting and depending on that you are collecting your information for your systematic review. Secondly, we have intervention. What is being done to them? So as you know, there are two groups, experimental and control group. In the control group, we do not use any drug or policy where in the experimental group we use drug or policy intervention to see how it works for as compared to the control group. So what kind of uh, policy or drug or method or operation whatever we are applying in the experimental group it is very important and that is what we call the intervention. So you can see by what means what are they exposed to. Then comparison. Comparison as compared to your control group, as compared to those who do not, do not get the policy or do not get the uh, medication, as compared to them, what is going on to your application of drug to a experimental group and that is your comparison group. So are we comparing the intervention to the something else, control, placebo or any other treatment group? Outcome of the interest, how, what outcome we are expecting, for example, which measurable outcome are relevant to our question, positive or negative, and the study design, whether it is a random, uh, randomized control, control trial, RCT, or any other design that we are applying. So, based on this PCOS protocol, you will select your research question. Similarly, we have another example called the SPIDER. And SPIDER, S stands for sample, who are the population, people you are interested in studying, phenomena of interest, likewise intervention, then design, what are the research methods that you are using, evaluation and research type. I have developed few research questions for you to understand how it works actually. For example, here it says, in diabetic patients over 40, is a low carb diet more effective than the standard diabetic diet in reducing blood sugar level over six month period? So this is my research question for systematic review. And in this question, what are our my PCOS protocol? My PCOS protocol here, population is a diabetic patient over 40 years old. Intervention is the low carb diet. Comparison, standard diabetic diet and reduction in blood sugar level over six months. That is my outcome. And the study design is randomized control trial. So if a paper contains this information, I will download only those article for my research question formulation and for my systematic review, because I am trying to find out what is the expected outcome from my research after synthesizing all the existing literature articles. It is applicable for systematic review and meta-analysis as well. 
Similarly, one of the other example for social science, here you can see do job training programs increase the employment rate of unemployed individuals in urban areas compared to those who do not participate in such program over a 12 months period? That is my research question. And in this particular case, my population is unemployed individuals. Intervention is my job training program. Comparison is no job training. Employment rate within 12 months is my outcome and study design is longitudinal study. So this is the PCOS example. If I go to the spider example, sample, phenomena of interest, design, evaluation, research type. For example, one of the research question, how do elderly patients with arthritis perceive the effectiveness of acupuncture for pain management? This is my research question. In this case, if I use spider protocol to formulate this research question, I have to include the idea that what is my sample here is elderly patient phenomena of interest pain management design is my qualitative study patient the perception and qualitative study my research type so if my spider is formulated i know the protocol properly come up coming up with a research question will be more easy because this research question if we break down the research question we will find this information sample phenomena of interest design evaluation and research type and based on this research question we synthesize all the articles that we have downloaded according to our protocol and meta-analysis as well and that will help us to come up with a solid research outcome in your publication because this is very important if you want to publish in a scopus index or high impact factor journal one more additional tips is that here there is one other thing that you need to remember is called reporting your protocol and in the reporting your protocol is very important that you always go for a prospero website you can see prospero is a directory where you can register your protocol what protocol you are taking it is especially for the medicine science and life science so the protocol is very important and in order to design the protocol and in order to register for the protocol in a prospero website before you start downloading article or collecting the data for systematic review and meta-analysis you can see the review protocol are background objective review question based on the pico framework then search strategy whether which databases you are actually uh, going to search your study articles for systematic review eligibility criteria like what are the eligibility criteria that you uh, apply for collecting your research question research articles for systematic review and meta-analysis and then we have additional idea and study quality assessment then data extraction and synthesizing and this is how you can fill up your form in order to register yourself in a prospero website before you go for systematic review and meta-analysis research writing it is very important you register your protocol in a prospero and one last thing is that i already explained the prisma flowchart very important for systematic review and meta-analysis Prisma is a, something, a guideline for us to follow in order to come up with the inclusion and exclusion criteria for our systematic review. So you can follow the Prisma flowchart and here is you can see the long list of Prisma information. You can always uh, download this article from the video description box and you can follow the Prisma guideline while you are inclusion and exclusion criteria when you set up for systematic review and meta-analysis. So in this video, my intention is to share that how you come up with a research question for systematic review and meta-analysis. And there are two important protocol. One is uh, PICOS and the other one is SPIDER. And on top of it, you need to register your protocol before you start writing research systematic review in a Prospero directory and follow the Prisma flowchart so that you can follow a guideline, standard guideline for your systematic and meta-analysis inclusion and exclusion criteria. If you follow these steps, your research question will be solid, your paper will be solid, and you can publish your paper very quickly in a Scopus Index or High Impact Factor Journal. Thank you so much, my dear learners. I will see you in the next tutorial with new exciting research information.